Hi everyone, Mike the Knee Jack Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new future in Metro Boomin' project, We Don't Trust You. Here we have a new collab album with another, a sequel, very soon on the way from two titans in modern day rap music. That would be rapper and singer Future, as well as producer extraordinaire Metro Boomin. Two men who you could say have done a lot to shape the sound these days. Between the popularity of Future's very repetitive, entrancing flows, his embrace of more psychedelic instrumentals, combined with his delivery that puts more of an emphasis on how catchy his flows are, the emotion in his voice, over the content in his bars, there's reason to believe that a lot of artists of the current generation, especially some of these rage dudes, would not be here without Future. Meanwhile, Metro Boomin has been behind the beat on some of the biggest game changers over the past 10 years. Numerous top tier future singles including Mask Off, I Love McConan's Tuesday, Travis Scott's 3500, Father Stretch My Hands 1 off of Kanye's T-Lop, A Jumpman from Future and Drake, The Weeknd's Heartless as well as Savage Mode both 1 and 2 with 21 Savage. And these tracks represent just a slice of Metro's growing production discography. He's also been spearheading more solo projects where he works with a range of artists, showcasing not just his talent for rap beats but synth like layers, arrangements, compositions, not to mention the soundtrack music he's been putting in work on recently too. The guy has really been expanding the sound and commercial potential for trap music for a while now, and I think that continues to be the case for We Don't Trust You, where I have to stress how significant it is he is doing a record like this alongside Future, considering how much of their respective success has been tied together due in part to certain songs. Future is also very much responsible for Metro's most a beloved producer tag. That would be if young Metro don't trust you, I'm gonna shoot you. Oh no! He's gonna shoot me! I'm too young and beautiful to die! Well, only if he doesn't trust you. Well, what do I gotta do? Mr. Metro, please! I'll do anything for you to trust me! Oh no, look, he's right behind you, he's over there! Hey! Uh, but yeah, it is pretty significant that Metro and Future are coming together on this large of a scale with this record. As we already know, they work together well, they have complementary styles, and they're now both at a point in their careers where they've grown so much in terms of uh, versatility and influence. But by that same token, I did go into this record worried that uh, the familiarity, creatively speaking, between these two guys would result in an album with no ambition. As Future does have a tendency to go on autopilot sometimes, and as the amount of work Metro puts out each year increases, so do the amount of average beats he puts out. However, I actually think Metro and Future managed to bring the best out of each other on this project, resulting in one of the most intoxicating and refined trap albums of the year. There's a decent amount of variety among the songs on this project too. It really does justify its runtime that's just short of an hour, and I can tell Metro really looked at this record on a macro level and cared uh, quite a bit about the flow, the way these tracks progressed into one another, especially when you take into account uh, how many tight and fluid transitions there are between each song. Let's kick things off with the first track, We Don't Trust You, which is a very moody opener, where Future is allowed to riff essentially for almost four minutes straight, with a few vocal drops peppered in here and there. It's not the strongest song on the album in terms of structure, but the beat transitions are on point. I think the atmosphere surrounding the instrumental is quite eerie, and I love these, uh, like, high school or college football band uh, type horn builds that pop in here and there. They, they really elevate the song quite a bit. And this is just one of many moments on this record where Metro is given some of these uh, cinematic trap beats and epic flair. So the track at least works in that sense, and I can't deny Future does really kind of bury uh, the theme and the core sentiment of the album in my head. Past this point, the record's best moments bring a very simple but effective formula where you you get some straightforward beats, some head nodding flows from Future where uh, he's really rocking with the lower register of his voice and uh, giving us a performance that reads almost as meditative, uh, hypnotic. And then Metro goes on from there to color the extra space surrounding all of this with progressive synth layers, string passages, some 
interesting electronics too. The song Young Metro, for example, has almost an 80s dystopian sci-fi soundtrack quality to it, with some background vocal assists from uh, The Weeknd himself, where he underscores almost the entirety of the track really well. You have moments like this where Metro is the one really stealing the show, others where it's future, such as on Ain't No Love, where his refrains are really what is making the track work from the calls of Ain't No Love to uh, selling drugs. And lyrically, Future is actually kind of spitting on this track about the tribulations of dealing drugs and trusting the wrong people. Then Type Shit is another moment where Metro's production is really what is at the forefront. Uh, this track sounds like what you would get if you used uh, your grandfather clock as a sample for a trap beat. Plus, there's an intergalactic instrumental transition that meets with a Travis Scott feature on the track. I would say the only downside to the cut that drags it down a bit is a very underwhelming and basic Playboy Cardi feature on the back end, where he's not only hitting us with this low-end puberty voice inflection, her, 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 but there are points where he barely even sounds coherent during it. Her, her, her. It's goofy, it's basic, and redundant as his flow doesn't even vary all that much from futures on the track. Moving on, we hear a pinnacle of creepy trap alchemy on the song GTA. I mean, given just how hard and just ghoulish the beat on this track is, I'm halfway expecting a drop from Trapaholics to uh, pop in here and there, or even like DJ Paul throwing out a, a mafia. Yeah, some big 3-6 vibes on this track for sure. Uh, then Future is absolutely hilarious on the track Claustrophobic with, again, more simple but very infectious flows as well as standout refrains uh, with him going on about feeling claustrophobic and as a result he has to buy another mansion. And as the track uh, digs deeper, he's just embracing larger levels of ridiculous excess. Then, like that is, of course, uh, the infamous song featuring that Kendrick Lamar verse that uh, has everybody talking about this record where he's throwing shots at Drake and J. Cole. He's referencing the track they recently dropped, First Person Shooter, where uh, Cole's kind of celebrating being a part of like the big three of hip-hop. Kendrick saying on this track, oh, fuck the big three, it's just big me. But yeah, all around strong performance from Kendrick, of course, in terms of uh, delivery, vocal inflections, lyricism. Uh, Future is entertaining on the song as well, but really what I love so much about this track is this throwback, clunky, groovy, dirty south style instrumental with these uh, squawking synth horn leads that are so odd but simultaneously so memorable. This is handily one of the hardest beats Metro did on this entire record. And there are a few other additional surprises on the record too, like on the song Fried She A Vibe where Future can be seen really yucking it up, not taking himself too seriously, singing about blowing racks on a stripper, being totally fried out of his mind while just kind of feeling like this woman is a vibe. Meanwhile, Metro is soundtracking this debauchery with very pretty glistening synthesizers as if we're hearing a cough syrup marinated trap version of LL Cool J's I Need Love. Then Everyday Hustle is another nice switch up on the record. The time goes to 3-4. We get some nice quality soul chops and a cool Rick Ross feature on the back end. Then a beat switch where Future actually uh, picks his flow up and shows that he's not going to be completely outwrapped by Ross, getting a bit competitive there and just adding more personality, more dynamics to the track, which is all for the better. And then toward the tail end of this thing, uh, Metro and Future really saved one of the best choruses for last on what the fuck you mean, which is just straight catchy heat, no more, no less. Now, uh, with this record, again, being almost an hour and having 16 tracks, of course, there are a few duds here and there, especially with one of the core criticisms of this album being that it is so chill. It is so laid back. It is just so quiet. And I really do think a handful of songs where Future is bringing, like, that monster level of energy would have broken things up a bit. I'm talking about moments like the first leg of Ice Attack, which uh, just kind of feels like a waste of time given how forgettable it is and how hard the beat switch is right after, which could also be said for the first half of Magic Don Juan. The song Slimed In as well, I think could have used some oomph because there are at least several other tracks on this record that are riding at about a similar energy level, but they're catchier and just feature 
better instrumentals. Then, Runnin' Out of Time to My Ears is maybe the most meh and forgettable song on the record, where Future is really trying to be in his R&B bag, and of course the results are awkward because uh, while he can sing on some lines here and there on a song, his range is still limited and he's not primarily a singer, at least to my ears. Not to mention the beat on this track is really lacking. Like, where the hell is the low end? Nearly every song up until this point has, like, some great bass, some punchy kicks, like a nice frequency range going on in terms of uh, the instrumental palette and the mix, but this track just feels so much thinner than every other song on the album, and I have no idea why. So yeah, the record, in my opinion, does not have the strongest first leg, uh, and there are a few songs here and there that I think uh, serve as potholes in the overall runtime of the album, but the bop to flop ratio overall is still very good. And once again, I think Future and Metro are doing some of their best stuff together here. I mean, this is handily some of the hottest shit Future has been on since, uh, like, the Monster era, which is why I'm feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 on this album. Tran, Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, future Metro Boomin' of forever.